and prognosis by well-grounded experts with wide-ranging top one in other national issues on SLBC. My panel of analysts in this edition of the program include Professor Cecil Blake, Peter Sissi represents the government views in this program, and introducing Abubakar Tarawali, um, he's a budget analyst, a media analyst, and a civil society analyst for the first time in this program with me. Uh, Victor Tutu Rojas is also here after uh, a few weeks break with us. Gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Inside the Media. Thank you very much. Of course, what's trending? Um, response is on the way for victims of the oil fuel tanker explosion at Wellington a week ago, or slightly more than a week ago. The government is responding to that, and a few other humanitarian gestures are equally entering your hospitals, where some of those who are alive are admitted. Chairman of the ruling party, SLPV, Prince, Dr. Prince Alex Arden, arrested, but only for a few hours, and detained at the Criminal Investigations Department following the death of his former driver, nickname, nickname, Don Poe. And What's now the biggest and most contentious is the suspension of La Tilopias, the Auditor General and one of her deputies. Gentlemen, these are trending issues. Let's start with obviously the responses so far by the government and other humanitarian organizations and individuals as well on the um, last Friday's Inferno at Wellington that claimed over confirmed so far over a hundred lives. As of Tuesday, it was 105 oh. government of, um, confirmed, but other unofficial reports are suggesting otherwise that the figures could be beyond that amount. Um, doctors have been flown in from Senegal and elsewhere to help the scarce number of medical practitioners Sierra Leone currently has to help salvage the bonds from those people and save their lives who are admitted at the various hospitals. 34 corner hospital and emergency. Let me begin with Peter Cisse. Peter, who represents the government views on this, I'll obviously start with you from the government's perspective. What should we know so far is um, the status or the position of government insofar as the response of the Wellington Flat disaster victims are concerned. Thank you very much. Um, you can vividly recall that the president was out of Sierra Leone when the incident occurred and he had to cut short his trip to ensure that it becomes part of the morning team. You know this tragic situation will not warrant any well-meaning president to stay at a distance from his people when they need him most. So you would agree with me that upon his return, he could not even wait. He paid a visit to the victims, those that were still breathing, or that were still battling with life at the various hospitals. But prior to that, um, the vice president was firm on the ground. He ensured that he equally pay visits to the site itself and try to also equally visit those that were caught up in this accident. Um, after it all, when the uh, president made a visit at the scene there, 
he made a strong promise on behalf of his government that whatever it takes to ensure that those lives that we are battling with, in all forms of support will sort of make available to them. And like a women leader, he declared a three-day morning, you, can, you will agree with me, which is to say it wasn't a public holiday, but it was like a moment that we must sit and have a rethink and think around the pathetic nature of what we are going through as a nation. So that implies that as a citizen, you will not be required or expected to play loud music when others are grieving. You understand? Again, there was another promise made. Because you know the infant itself will not be one that somebody will categorize on the decent manner or nature of dying. So that means some of the bodies we are going back, we needed an expedient uh, yeah, yeah, burial ceremony. So that was arranged and the president promised to give them a defeating burial and that was done. He ensured that himself, the vice and some other ministers were all present at the day of the burial. And buses were made available for parents or family members that want to identify themselves in this grieving moment. What was interesting also was the role played by the Minister of Health. Because you know some of the victims we are born to be in recognition. But being that we now we are now exposed to scientific advancement, samples of each of those that will not be recognized are taken. DNA samples. DNA samples. So that with time that sequencing for you to have an opportunity to know the burial site or grave of your 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 your, your family member, if you so much match with the DNA, you will have that opportunity. So so much was done. The unfortunate thing, it is always expected that when you have a body of a serious nature amounting to sixty degrees it the survival rate is always minimal. So we still are... Uh, okay, yeah. If not impossible. Yeah, so we are still... And we keep, and we keep um, receiving reports of deaths. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We are still recording. Uh, the number is still surging. The deaths will keep rising. It keeps rising, yeah. So... Um, of you, said, you said the registration of um, um, victims, families of those victims, at, uh, especially Old Wharf and elsewhere, communities nearby, has ended because the National Disaster Management Agency was said to have um, started the registration and or verification of these <coughs> family members. Would you say that has ended? Well, it has to be ongoing. Because remember, I would recall sharing an experience of a lady that only came to realize that her husband was part of the incident when she visited the site the following morning by identifying the bond vehicle. You understand? So until you have days running without you seeing or getting any form of information around your missing person, then you begin to identify yourself as part of those that will want to make claims. You understand? Yeah, I mean, I wondered how is government going to cope with those people that have already started floating um, messages, hoax, more, more or less, uh, in quotes, from what we have had, so especially WhatsApp, uh, not put any. In, in, in picture of you now, or WhatsApp or Facebook, or so then they do verification and all the submission and those funny stuff, hoax, and um, defrauding the system. You see, Patrick, um, has government go back with that? The mindset of Sierra Leoneans need to change. We must not be told when, as a nation, we must sympathize or rally behind a situation that demands unity. You understand? People think that if you are by nature a comedian, in every moment, even when people are grieving, you must exhibit your comedy. No. This is a moment of tears. This is a moment of grief. This is a moment of crying. So for you to think, because I want to have the conviction that the OJ you are referring to was more or less... Odious, in fact. Yeah, a mockery. But in reality, if you want to make an attempt around playing criminal games, 
with something that is very uh, serious in my view. If you are caught, you will definitely have a price to pay. All right. Um, Professor Cecil Blake, have we learned any lesson as a country? Because this is not the first time we're um, entering into such disasters. Maybe of this magnitude, it is the first, but such disasters are not new. Have we learned our lesson as a country? Considering the number of players that have been blamed, even though the president said this is not the time for blame game. But sometimes, um, if you don't know where you're coming from, like people will say, you need to know where you're going. Have we learned a lesson? Are, are, are the authorities really serious? Are, are we expected to learn from this and make our systems workable effectively? Of course we are expected to learn from this. And what I don't have at hand and have not seen it in public display is the what have we learned from this? That question. Okay? I've not seen any public demonstration of that. It might be there. In what sense? In terms of uh, maybe statements coming from the respective agencies, from government, from the police, from the response teams, you know, what have we learned from this? We had that massive mudslide and uh, the response was extremely difficult, to put it softly. Now we have this situation. And the last time we spoke about this, I mentioned the problem of congestion. And for me, with something like this that happened, I think that's an issue that we should really focus on. And when I say congestion, I just don't mean overpopulation. The, when an accident like this occurs, you know, there, were, there was a long line of vehicles. You know, some people died in their vehicles. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know what the police... Some coming from the provinces, yes, some coming from yeah. work. Yeah, what would be a good thing is if we meet the unit of the police would um, brief us as a nation about lessons learned from this in terms of responses to this traffic jam. Because this traffic jam was catastrophic. All right, and so I don't know the extent to which the police are willing to let us get an insight into that. They have said investigations are on the way, yeah, so there yeah. is little or nothing you can say. But you know, this that's, that's a standard response. But um, I'm not talking about this immediately. I'm talking about lessons learned from disaster. So it's extremely critical that um, the police, the Ministry of Information and Protesting, should be in a position to let the nation realize that the government and other agencies are actively concerned about responding to these disasters <coughs> in a manner in which would reduce the loss of life. So that is necessary. That kind of public information is necessary. The other thing that might be worthy of note is from this incident and the prior incident, public or mass information are we seeing enough of it? As in civic education? Yes. Well, we talked about civic education. We mm -hmm. recall. Yeah, the yeah. last, last edition. That we have to elevate that a little bit. But um, I think we need to hear more about that. Particularly with the immediacy of this disaster. We need more voices, not social media. You know, um, I don't... Social media, you know, misinformation and disinformation is rampant. I think a very well orchestrated government uh, sta government statements, series of statements on lessons learned on the kind of interventions that uh, we're expecting to do. I'm glad to hear that that uh, doctors are flown in from Senegal. Is it yeah. okay? So these are the kinds of things that we learn from. Now, do we always need to fly doctors in? You see. These are the kinds of questions we, we, these are the kinds of lessons I believe that should have raised an alarm. What is going on with the... So it goes back to the point you raised the last time that there's a breakdown in our system. If we have to, flo if we have to fly in doctors for a disaster of, uh, for people that are limited in number, admitted at the hospitals. Yeah, you know, flying in doctors to disaster areas in other parts of the world is not a new phenomenon. It is not. Okay, um, this happens in other parts of the world that doctors are sent to assist. 
but um, it seems to me that if we have this kind of situation, let's look into ourselves to see the extent to which we can create that critical mass. That might not be enough. Do we have the, you know, do we have actually the capacity, medical capacity? Why not? Otherwise, the, the, government, is, will, otherwise the government will not apply those options. Yeah, but the question is, we talk about capacity, but we have to create the situation to upgrade our capacity. As part of the lessons learned. Yes, we, yes we, we cannot just say, oh, we don't have the capacity, we don't do that. What are we doing about really rectifying that situation? So these are the kinds of questions that we need to ask. Now, we may still need medical assistance from outside. We may still, this is a serious disaster. But in the meantime, internally, what are we doing? In fact, I was asking a question last time um, as I encountered people who had relatives who they could not identify, that people burned beyond recognition. And I'm pleased to hear that the DNA, we, we have DNA facilities. I don't know if it is something we're anticipating, or I don't know if we have in place mechanisms for that kind of DNA testing, or is it something that we're going to send these uh, samples, over, samples overseas? So these are the issues, these are the lessons that I think need to be uh, addressed. Right. Um, Abubakar and, and Victor, um, do you see the response from government, sufficient government and or other people, because government will not be able to work it alone, work it out alone. Are there enough responses you've seen so far? I'll start with you, Abu Bakar, around this. Do you think government has done enough, because government is the parent body to start with? Well, um, I may put that into two categories. The willingness, the political will, or the means to reaching out those victims. On the side of government, they demonstrated enough you know, empathy with the massive loss. And you saw from uh, Peter's explanation that the president wasted no time but to reach out to the victims. But again, it comes down to, um, let me say, the vulnerability of Sierra Leone in terms of handling disasters of such nature. You know, I could vividly recall prior to the budget um, hearing when the Ministry of uh, Health and Sanitation and National Disaster Management and all the relevant bodies were talking about disaster preparedness. Um, over the time, if we should go to 2020, the, there is about 56% um, of the national budget which went to recurrent expenditure only. Um, not a much you could say for capital investment. So when disaster struck and you are not prepared for it, where will you go to restore where you can take to respond quickly? Uh, we don't have enough in our medical stores. And even the expertise, recall.